it's two on the bounce. Starship has made it to the Indian Ocean yet again, closing out this era of development and a tough year for Starship with another resounding success. It was a beautiful clean ascent out of pad one for booster 15 and ship 38. For a final time, we were treated to a beautiful sunset liftoff a little ways into the window, but not holding for too long. Starship reached hot staging without any issues whatsoever. All 33 Raptor engines on the booster were firing for the entirety of the ascent burn. We then saw all six Raptors igniting on ship 38. It went on its way. We'll get back to the ship in a minute because for now we're going to focus on the super heavy booster where one middle ring Raptor did not return for the boost back burn. We then of course saw the boost back shutting down, the hot stage ring being jettisoned. The final time we will see this because of course with block three, the hot stage ring is integrated into the booster design itself. And after passing through the atmosphere, through the heating, through the friction, literally making the aft section glow orange, all 13 Raptors returned for the landing burn. That's including the Raptor, which was shut off for the boost back burn. This landing burn, of course, had a brand new profile, SpaceX testing the limits of the super heavy booster, preparing for block three. We saw 13 Raptors igniting, then a down selection to five Raptor engines, before a final down selection to the three middle Raptor engines and a hover of booster 15. But of course, the booster can't hover forever. Eventually, Isaac Newton has something to say. And with the shutdown of the landing burn, booster 15 plummeted to the Gulf and exploded as planned in a wonderful fashion. Let's check in with Ship 38 once again, because whilst Booster 15 was doing its gymnastics, its ascent was going flawlessly. It reached Seco, just like we saw on Starship Flight 10. A few minutes later, after a reorientation, Ship 38 successfully deployed all eight of these Starlink simulators, the second time Starship has deployed a payload. After shutting the payload bay door, Ship 38 continued on its suborbital trajectory around the world and successfully relit one of its sea level Raptor engines, once again proving Starship can ignite a Raptor in space. This is crucial for when SpaceX wants to send Starship into orbit because, well, you don't want a vehicle of Starship size just floating around in an uncontrollable trajectory. Some people on the ground might not be too happy with that. So by demonstrating they can relight Raptors in space, they've demonstrated they can deorbit successfully. But of course, the show was not over yet. Re-entry was yet to come and Starship 38 passed peak heating with no explosions in the engine bay like we saw on Starship Flight 10. SpaceX confirmed that this Flight 10 explosion was due to some problems with the engine chill lines. But of course, as we saw, there were no engine chill line problems to be seen on Starship Flight 11. Passing through 55 kilometers, we were approaching sunrise over the Indian Ocean and we saw some incredible banking maneuvers through re-entry. They didn't stop there though, because as we got through 30 kilometers, Ship 38 started doing some even heavier banking. This was simulating lining up with the tower at Starbase. That's right, SpaceX were turning Ship 38 as if it was lining up for a catch with the tower at Starbase. And some of the views from onboard Starship were just incredible during this time. Of course, all broadcast live via Starlink. One hour and six minutes exactly after it departed pad one for the very final time, Starship Block 2 conducted a landing burn for the very last time, igniting all three sea level Raptor engines and flipping. It then slowly descended towards the waters of the Indian Ocean with a beautiful, smooth, soft splashdown and of course the planned explosion right next to the buoy cam. Oh, and for some reason, SpaceX decided to fire the deluge system at the pad at T plus one hour and 20 minutes. We're not really sure what they were thinking, but maybe they were just emptying the water tanks. After all, they're never going to have to use pad one again, so maybe they're just trying to expedite the demolition process. This flight rounded out a historic era of Starship development. As Booster 15 is the last V1 booster to ever fly, it means it's also the last flight from pad one. SpaceX is working on building a brand new proper launch pad and brand new booster design, which are incompatible with the current infrastructure. We're still yet to see a fully completed Block 3 Super Heavy booster, but SpaceX has been spending a significant amount of time and resources with booster test tanks, testing everything they can before assembling a full flight article. Fingers crossed, this process doesn't take too much longer because we can't wait to see Booster 18. On the ship side of development, the Block 2 generation has had a tough time, to say the least. Ships 33 and 34 didn't even make it to ship engine cutoff, lighting up the Caribbean as their stainless steel remains re-entered. Ship 35 did make it to Seco, but then lost attitude control immediately thereafter, burning up upon re-entry. The infamous explosion of Ship 36 followed next, with a COPV failure setting back Starship's 10th flight 
by quite some time. Ship 37 did make it through re-entry to a soft splashdown, albeit with an explosion in the engine bay and a toasty aft flap. And of course, we've just seen what happened with Ship 38. It's no secret that Elon Musk wants to launch Starships to Mars next year, and if SpaceX wants to achieve that goal, they've got to get things moving. They need to test rendezvous and docking, in-space refueling, but before any of that, they need to launch Starship Block 3 successfully. And if the first four Block 2 Starships were anything to go by, it might take them a minute to get there. And let's not forget the Artemis program, because the Starship Human Landing System is still currently slated as the Lunar Lander for Artemis 3 in 2027. To keep track of that progress, there's a button specifically for that right down there. But for now, I've been Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching, and goodbye.